Latvia, a small Baltic Republic, a country with a strong national identity situated within the center of the Baltic states. Throughout the course of history, its desire for freedom has always taken it forward. Riga, capital of Latvia, a Hanseatic city and European capital of culture. St. Petri Church is one of the oldest in the center of the city and, at the same time, a main landmark. It is one of the most important sacred buildings of the Middle Ages and is closely linked with the development of the city. Adjacent is the Schwarzhaupter building in all its Renaissance glory. A great sight from the past. The middle-class buildings of Elizabeth and Albert Street indicate the prosperity of its past occupants. Like almost nowhere else, Art Nouveau has been preserved incredibly well here, with lavish embellishments and numerous motifs. In 1234, the Dominicans founded a monastery and its monks built St. John's Church to commemorate St. John the Baptist. The Baroque altar is relatively plain. The opera is the national sanctuary of the Latvians and is lovingly referred to as the White House. Its facade is reminiscent of an ancient Greek temple. At first, it looks like a castle, but it is actually a guild building. Guilds were originally cooperatives made up of craftsmen and later the general population. In the middle of the 14th century, the merchants seceded from the crafts guild. Mary Cathedral is situated in the center of the city and is the most important religious building in the Baltic states. It was modeled on the cathedral of the Hanseatic city of Lübeck, which was well known to the bishop and his crusaders. Its age, dimensions and contrasting architectural styles bear witness to a long history. According to legend, Tsar Peter I was forced to wait in front of the locked gate. The well-preserved powder tower is the largest tower of the old fortress system. These three buildings, Tris Brali, the three brothers, were named thus as they were attached to one another. In the 14th and 15th centuries, the Order Castle was located here, now no more. A boat trip on the Daugava River helps to recall the city's colorful history. Here, the Vikings docked, embarked on notorious raids and various other ventures. Beyond Powder Tower is a splendid area, with much greenery and several waterways. On the other side of the canal is the city's most important national monument of modern times. Each hour, the Guard of Honor changes, a time-honored ritual. The Liberty Memorial is a symbol of the unity of the country and the city's independence. The famous Lima Watch is located in the pedestrian zone. Next to the cathedral is Liven Square with its beer garden, framed by guild houses. A 
nostalgic tram leads to the edge of the city. This is the Brother Cemetery, of great importance to Latvia's history. Next, the open-air museum of folk culture. From each of Latvia's regions, dwelling houses and furniture have been reassembled here. Close to Riga is Jumala, today a popular health resort on the Latvian Riviera. With splendid bay-windowed villas, battlements and towers, formerly Baroque, later a nod at Gothic. Thirty kilometers of beaches with bright erinaceous quartz and a mild climate created a holiday paradise here in the 19th century. The nobility frequented this area and the exclusive spa architecture demonstrates the early popularity of this region. Former fishing villages became idyllic health resorts. Amid the fertile Zengali plain is the magnificent, huge Baroque Yelgava castle, the largest in Latvia. In 1737, the residence of the then secular ruler of the Duchy of Courland was built on the ramparts of an ancient castle of the Livonian order. Beneath the southeast corner of the castle is the Crypt of the Dukes, a tomb vault with 30 superbly decorated sarcophagi of tin and wood. At first sight, it looks like the French castle of Versailles, but it is Rundale Castle. Constructed by Bartolomeo Rastrelli. The huge palace garden contains 328,000 lime, oak and chestnut trees. various fountains according to Baroque design. The Golden Hall with its huge ceiling painting served as both throne and audience room at the same time. Here the virtues of the Duke are highlighted in perfect form. A large gallery leads to a superb hall on the first floor. The White Hall, whose corners are adorned with stucco figures. A small gallery leads to the Rose Hall that is decorated with red marble and silk wallpaper. Rundale was the summer residence of Ernst Johann Biron, who was the particular favourite of Tsarina Anna Ivanova. Thus was realised one of the most outstanding architectural monuments of the Baroque and Rococo eras. Man has lived on the rugged southern Baltic seacoast for more than 750 years. The remains
remains of former fortifications are a reminder of a Russian port of war which once dictated life here. The port of Karosta was of strategic importance and a strictly controlled area for 50 years. A building built as a hospital in around 1900 served as a military prison. It was only in 1997 that the last inmate was released. It's well worth a visit. There's a guided tour of the prison. And an overnight stay in a locked cell is only for the brave of heart. Trinity Church was founded in 1758 on the initiative of the German community who furnished it magnificently. The three-nave hall church is the largest church in Latvia, built according to the rules of Protestantism. In the heart of Kurzims, on the bank of the Venta River, is the small picturesque town of Kuldiga. An old brick bridge crosses the Ventus Romba River. The water of the country's widest rapids plunges to a depth of two meters. In spring and autumn, fish attempt to defeat the raging torrent by springing upwards against it. Built in 1860, the new town hall and the old one that dates back to the 17th century adorn the former town hall square. The rather plain looking Trinity Church dates back to 1640. However, and somewhat of a surprise, its interior features the splendour of both Baroque and Rococo design. The old town remains a closed ensemble of historic buildings with red tiled roofs. Old German merchant properties in medieval surroundings which give the city a nostalgic flair. Ventspils is located in the north of Latvia's west coast on the Baltic Sea. Since the 13th century, a city of sailors. From the 14th to the 16th centuries, it was a member of the German Hansa. And in the middle of the 17th century, a shipyard was built for warships and merchant ships, which led to the prosperity of the city. On the banks of the Vento River is the only castle of the Order of the Princedom of Kutzima. Built by the Livonian Order, at the end of the 13th century. The rooms are well furnished and open to the public. A tour around the harbour 
makes it clear that Ventspils is the most important port in Latvia. Here, oil from Siberia is loaded, as well as chemical products and also wood and fish. A steam locomotive and its old wagons that date back to 1916 makes its way through forests to an open-air museum. The narrow-gauge railway operated through the coastal villages until the middle of the 20th century. A well-preserved windmill welcomes visitors to the Coastal Fisherman's Open-Air Museum. It features the fishermen's residential and commercial buildings. and the red-roofed workshops of craftsmen. Next to the museum, the beach begins with the White Dune. And an impressive view of expansive beaches and sea. From 1878, the new Sigulda Castle was built on the site of an outer bailey of an order castle for Russian Prince Kropotkin. In 1936, it became a recreational centre and is now home to the city council. Sigulda Castle was built by the Order of the Brothers of the Sword, but following union with the Teutonic Order, passed over to the Livonians. The medieval castle was once the seat of the Commandery Order. In the Northern War, it was badly damaged. Watchtowers and some of its walls have survived. A cable car crosses forest treetops and the Gorgia River and travels to the opposite bank. Sixteen hundred meters of adventure that rises to a height of forty meters. A romantic and thrilling experience. From the cable car station, a path leads to the ruins of a castle. The former Krimulda castle was built for the Archbishop of Riga. In 1601, the Swedes conquered the fortress and burnt it to the ground. Here in Gorgia Valley, the interests of both the Archbishop and the Order collided and turned into a struggle for power. Eventually, the Pope decided that the Crusaders be granted the shores of today's Sigulda and the Bishop the opposite bank, today's Turaida. The old Bishop Castle, which is now part of Turaida's museum complex, can be seen from far away. Its massive walls and remaining huge watchtowers indicate past dangers and the need for sturdy fortifications. In 1214, Archbishop Albert 
had Friedland Castle built on the remains of a timber-built Livonian castle. It burnt down in 1776, with the exception of the tower. There's also a museum that depicts the hard life that took place daily in a castle of the Middle Ages. From the 30-metre-high tower, there's a breathtaking view of the castle buildings and the forest landscape of the Gorgia Valley. The Gorgia River meanders alongside wooded banks and caves and grows increasingly into a wide river. A natural paradise within an historic setting. The picturesque primordial river valley of Gorgia has for centuries attracted travellers from each corner of the world. This Livonian Switzerland not only has the charm of primary nature, but also all the ambience of the Middle Ages. On the way up the 85 metre deep ravine, the Gorgia River collects water from 13 tributaries. In the 1930s, this beautiful landscape was placed under a conservation order and was thus protected from destruction. Cesis is located in the middle of the highlands. It is one of the oldest and most splendid in the country, the heart of Vidzem. St. John's Church is also the oldest basilica. This, the largest Gothic church outside Riga, was founded in 1282 as the main church of the Brothers of the Sword. Several grand masters are buried here. The old town is dominated by a medieval castle. Also in Cesis, the usual sequence of events, first mentioned in 1224, conquered by German crusaders, subsequent membership of the Hansa. From 1778 on, the new castle was inhabited by the noble von Silvers family. In the coffee shop, there's always a warm welcome. Since the 13th century, the medieval castle has shared its fate together with the city in fighting against Russian, Polish and Swedish armies. Despite much damage, today the ruins are still quite impressive. Today's Latvia is now striking a healthy balance between a market economy, ancient traditions and the burdensome legacy of a turbulent past. Its journey into the European Union has been a success, thanks to courage, strength and faith.